The news at 530 starts right now. The State Fair of Texas back open today after a shooting forced it to shut down last night. Police identifying the shooter as 22 year old Cameron Turner saying he's facing aggravated assault charges. According to police, the shooting happened just before eight last night at the food court in the Fair Parks Tower building. Sources telling ABC station in Dallas that Turner told police he was getting a drink at the food court when a couple of people approached him and he felt threatened. Turner claims he fired his weapon in self-defense. That's all you saw was people running and screaming without any like actual confirmation that there was a shooter somewhere. Two men and a woman were shot. All are expected to be OK. Officials at the State Fair are reminding attendees to remain fair aware and to report anything suspicious. At 10, we talked to a Uvalde woman who was there when that shooting happened. Back here in San Antonio, the state's oldest veterans of foreign wars post attracts tourists and visitors, but it's long overdue for some needed repairs. The three-story white Victorian style house sitting right along the San Antonio Riverwalk is in such disrepair guests could not use the restroom. Camelia Juarez is at VFW Post 76 with an update. Tim, Courtney, first of all, the restrooms are working just fine. The building committee tells me that they made a complete overhaul of the plumbing system and it won't be an issue any longer. Now, up until this point, the post completed a lot of patchwork repairs using volunteers and repairs were paid for with money from the bar or from events. Now the building committee is taking serious steps to get the right funding. Building committee chair Steve Trevino says this building is part of San Antonio's historical fabric. This house was built within 50 years of the Alamo falling. This house belongs to the tree rings of San Antonio growing as an oak tree with our communities, with our neighborhoods. As, as the city grew out with residential, this is part of that inner, this is the heart of the of the, the oak tree for San Antonio. Coming up in the night beat, we'll tell you how the VFW post is partnering with the city to get some lasting funding. This way, this building is here for years to come. Camelia Juarez, KSA 12 News. Now to Israel, where the country is preparing for a ground invasion into Gaza in retaliation for the brutal attack by Hamas militants more than a week ago now. Yeah, the U.S. appointing former Ambassador David Satterfield as special envoy, who will focus on ensuring life-saving assistance can reach vulnerable people throughout the Middle East. ABC's Inez de la Coutera now with the latest from Jerusalem. Israel continues preparing for an imminent invasion of the Gaza Strip. The IDF says plans are set for a coordinated attack by air, sea and land. And we will strike Hamas from the top through its institutions all the way down to the individuals that conducted the butchery of our babies. Um, we did not ask for this war, but we will win it. Israel has been dropping leaflets over Gaza, urging people to move south for their own safety. We have asked Gaza civilians in northern Gaza to evacuate to the south so that uh, they are out of an area that is going to be an active in combat zone. Israel launching retaliatory airstrikes into Gaza more than a week ago following the brutal attack by Hamas. Israeli officials say at least 1,300 have been killed in Israel, others taken hostage. Their families now pleading for their return. My aunt suffers from Parkinson's disease. She's 63 every day without her medication is torture. She's being tortured. In Gaza, more than 9,000 injured since the conflict began and more than 2,600 killed, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. 35,000 people now sheltering at Gaza's main hospital. The situation at the hospital today is catastrophic. The refugees filled the corridors. President Biden standing firmly behind Israel, but expressing concern over the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Can't lose sight of the fact that the overwhelming majority of Palestinians had nothing to do with Hamas. Secretary of State Antony Blinken returns to Israel on Monday after meeting with leaders throughout the Middle East, one of his main objectives to prevent the conflict from spreading. This is a difficult and a challenging time, but there's a determination that I've heard across the board to work through it, uh, to get through it, and to do that together. Meanwhile, a bipartisan congressional delegation led by Senator Chuck Schumer met with Israeli leaders on Sunday. At one point, they were rushed to a shelter to wait out a Hamas rocket attack. In Ezdel Equitera, ABC News, Jerusalem. Back here at home to other stories we're following now. Six people are injured after a teenager crashes his car into another. 
than a pole and a home. According to SAPD, the 15 year old who was driving on Walhalla Avenue near Creeth Place around noon today when he hit another car that had five people inside. After hitting that other car, the teen then ran into a utility pole in the corner of a house, causing about $10,000 worth of damage. All six people were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. All are expected to be okay. Bear County deputies are investigating a man's death after he was found suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. According to BCSO, deputies responded to a shooting call around 1.30 this morning near Candlewick Court and Foster Road. When they got there, they found the man lying in the front yard with multiple gunshot wounds to his stomach. They tried to save him, but he passed away at the scene. Deputies are asking anyone in the area to check their cameras so they can figure out what happened. And San Antonio police are investigating a shooting that left a nine year old child injured. Police say around 1030 last night, someone shot through a home on Lombrano Street and Zara Zamora. The child was grazed by a bullet, but is expected to recover. No one else in the home was injured at this time. No suspect information available. Still ahead on the news at 5.30, a major recall on baby bibs and blankets. Why these products pose a choking hazard and what you can do to keep your baby safe. And just how much pedestrian traffic deaths have risen in our state over the past five years when we come back. Tech Stop bringing their new statewide pedestrian safety campaign right here to San Antonio this week. And the walking billboards you see right here were on Flores Street from Cesar Chavez to I-35 this morning. Tech Stop hopes these billboards will help people be more aware of folks who are crossing the street. According to Tech Stop, pedestrian traffic deaths have risen nearly 30% here in Texas over just the past five years. Nearly half a million baby bids and blankets have been recalled due to a possible choking hazard. The recall involves roughly 450,000 sleepyhead loveys and baby bandana bibs from Little Sleepies. The company says the care instruction label on the products can detach, posing a choking hazard. They were sold online and at boutique stores nationwide in a variety of colors and patterns from February 2021 through September of this year. You should either remove that label or return the product for a full refund. Another recall to tell you about Ford recalling over 200,000 of its vehicles. Certain models of the 2020 through 2022 Explorer models are being recalled due to a risk of roll away if the parking brake isn't applied. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says Ford will repay the repair the vehicles free of charge. Those repairs will include a replacement of the rear axle bolt and subframe bushing. Owners of the affected vehicles will receive letters from Ford next month. Yesterday, the San Antonio Zoo was packed with people walking for children with congenital heart defects. The Children's Heart Foundation and University Health say over $79,000 was raised to help families and their children born with those heart defects. The foundation says congenital heart defects are Americans' most common birth defect, affecting nearly 40,000 babies yearly. All right, let's head outside with live cam now. Take a look at all of that beautiful sunshine. Not a cloud in the sky. We've had low humidity. It's been a very comfortable afternoon. The only thing we've really had to deal with to wrap up the weekend's plans is the winds. They have been gusting out of the north at about 25 to even 30 miles per hour and should start to subside as we head into the evening hours. All right, looking ahead to the upcoming work week, the next few mornings going to be pretty chilly out there, but then that's going to transition to comfortable fall like afternoons as we head into the later portions of this week though we're going to start to see a warming trend take over and that's going to take us into next weekend as well we'll time it out and get you the details after the break Nice night sleeping with the windows open again. A little breezy out there, though, this afternoon. Yeah, we turned that AC off in my daughter's room. It was very <laughs> exciting. I got up early to go outside and just enjoy the comfortable morning. It was cool, and we actually did manage to find a few clouds out there earlier today, but all of that cleared, and we've seen so much sunshine out there this afternoon. But, yes, the wind has been one of the biggest things that we've had to contend with if you have been out and about. Again, peak wind gusts generally in the range of about 25 to 30 miles per hour, and 
we are still seeing some of those wind gusts right now in that range of 28 mile per hour wind gusts now reported over at the airport 23 miles per hour in Canyon Lake 25 over in New Braunfels. Generally, we will start to see those winds calm down over the next several hours, especially after sunset 77 degrees. The current temperature here in San Antonio dry air in place, so it feels like it as well. Dew points down in the 30s. By the way, that low humidity will continue over the next 48 to 72 hours as well. Here's a look at temperatures in and around the San Antonio area. If you're fixing to step out for any Sunday evening plans, 73 in Canyon Lake, 77 on the east side in Converse, 80 in Hondo stretching over to Castroville as well. Here's your evening forecast. We'll see those temperatures gradually fall into the 60s after the sun goes down as well. 60 degrees expected by 11 p.m. with clear skies in place. Looking ahead to the upcoming work week, we've got a few chilly mornings in store near 50 by 7 a.m. tomorrow, potentially some upper 40s closer to the Alamo City on Tuesday. Wednesday is pretty similar, and then as we start to see a little bit more moisture work its way back into the region by Thursday, those overnight lows come up to about 60 degrees. But first, planning out your morning commute tomorrow, this is what you can expect. You will want the extra layer, but by the afternoon, I don't think you're going to need it. 50 degrees expected here in town, 51 in Pleasanton and Poteet as well, especially as you get into the higher elevations across portions of the hill country. I do think some 40s are possible first thing tomorrow. We will see plenty of sunshine throughout the day, very similar to what we've seen this afternoon as well. 71 degrees by one o'clock in the afternoon. There's that forecast high pointed around 77, a little bit below average for this time of year. Very pleasant 77 in Divine as well as Castroville, 77 in Bandera and 75 in Kerrville. I mentioned that drier air and low humidity. That's why it feels so comfortable to step out to. That will continue Monday, Tuesday and even into Wednesday for the most part. But then we start to see some of that moisture work its way back into the region by Thursday. It's slightly more of a muggy feel in store there. And along with that, afternoon temperatures are going to start to warm up. Copy and paste tomorrow into Tuesday, still topping off in the upper 70s. But by Wednesday, we're closing in on the low 80s. Could be a little breezy there as well. Wind gusts upwards of about 20 miles per hour. And then Thursday, noticeably warmer in the mid 80s. We've got a 10% chance for a very stray shower. Unfortunately, it's not looking too significant, but it's something we'll monitor. Here's the setup. We've got a high pressure system off to our west right now. That's going to be in control through about midweek, which is why we're expecting pretty quiet conditions. But then as that works eastward, our focus turns to this low pressure system approaching the Great Lakes on Thursday. That's what looks to drop a boundary into south central Texas. And yes, we could fi find a stray shower out there on the radar, but as of right now, coverage is looking very limited and very low. After that, temperatures are going to start to warm. Friday, we're actually nearing 90 degrees, and that will continue into the upcoming weekend. So that's something we'll monitor there as well. Until then, enjoy the cooler mornings over the next few days and very comfortable afternoons. Hmm. I see a low of 49. I love that. I'm excited. Very happy about might that. not sleep with the windows open. <laughs> okay, yeah, you might be cold. All right, big matchup between the Cowboys and the Chargers tomorrow on Monday Night Football. Larry's already out in L.A. getting ready for it by hanging out on the beach. Where else? <laughs> Yeah, what a great place to hang out, right? Manhattan Beach. I'll tell you actually why we're here, because originally we were not supposed to be live here. So we're here to get you ready for the Monday night showdown between the Cowboys and the Chargers. So how did Dak Prescott handle that embarrassing loss to the San Francisco 49ers and the Houston Texans are back in the win column thanks to C.J. Stroud coming up after the break. You can't be shaken by it. You can't change your preparation. You can't change anything you've done because of that happened. It's business as usual for Dak as he gets ready to face the Chargers in Big Board Sports. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to beautiful, sunny Southern California and Manhattan Beach. So we were originally scheduled to go live over at SoFi Stadium, but the Rams are home today, so we could not get on the property. So what else could we do but go to the beach, right? So we are here to start our coverage on the Monday night showdown between the Cowboys and the L.A. Charters live right here on KSAT 12 tomorrow night at SoFi. So let's get to that video. The Cowboys come to L.A. at 3-2 and two this season and licking their wounds after that 49ers embarrassed them a week ago tonight. 
42 to 10. Now, nothing went right in that game for the boys. Dak Prescott said he didn't see it coming based on how the team prepared for that contest. As disappointing as that loss is, Dak had to move on quickly and prep for the L.A. Chargers. You don't have time in this league to have a hangover. And um, even after a game like that, that's disappointing as it is, it's one game, thankfully. It's one game, and uh, we've got to move forward, and we've got to we get a chance to go out here Monday night and, and uh, put a, put a, something else on tape and, and move forward as we get into the, uh, go into this bye week and uh, get ready to build off of that. And hitting the bye week at four and two is mentally much, much better than three and three. The boys need this game for sure. Mary Rominger is also here in SoCal to help us with our coverage, and she has more. What's going on, Mary? Yeah, Larry, through five games, Dallas's passing offense ranks 20th in the NFL, which has been frustrating for C.D. Lamb and the rest of the Cowboys receiving core. And last week, it showed on the Cowboys sideline at Levi Stadium. For me, it's, it's all about my mentality. Uh, I feel like that's where my leadership comes in and the way I take the field, the way I talk to my guys um, and the way, you know, I'm able to impact the game. So just keeping that, you know, keeping my head right mentally. I, I promise you I'm fine. CD is good and there is still time. The season is young for Dallas's offense to find its groove. Back to you, Larry. All right. Thank you very much, Mary. So you know what? This is what happens when you don't come to the beach prepared. I had to take off my socks and shoes and roll up my pant legs. Gerber, don't be jealous, baby. All right, I send it back to sports where Nick Mantis has Ew, more. Gross. <laughs> I don't know that anybody ever needs to see that ever again. Thank you, Larry. As for today's games, the Houston Texans were looking to keep things good, good times rolling against the New Orleans Saints, the team who just beat the Patriots 34 to nothing. We pick up the action in the end of the first quarter. CJ Stroud runs to play action and finds Dolchin Schultz in the end zone for his third touchdown of the season. Then just before halftime, Stroud looking around and zings it into Robert Woods to make it a 10 point lead. The last chance for the Saints, Derek Carr, he gets hit as he throws and Steven Nelson makes sure they don't convert on fourth down as the Texans hold on to win it 20 to 13 to final, improving to three and three on the season. And CJ Stroud was proud of how the team fought for this one. It was a hard fought win, uh, needed that one, man. Our, our biggest thing was leave, empty the tank and leave the uh, game three and three um, and going into the bye week. So it was huge for us. Um, Got to uh, have a good bye week and, and get better there. Um, rest up because it's going to be a, a big time um, second half of the season that we need to execute better and be better at. So um, happy with the win and, and proud of my guys for being resilient and fighting. So. Well, how about some more games from the AFC South teams? The Jacksonville Jaguars hosting the Indianapolis Colts and Travis Etienne taking the Wildcat snap 22 yards and in for the touchdown. Then Trevor Lawrence wanted to have some fun fighting Christian Kirk in the middle of the zone defense as the Zags stay on top of the AFC South with a 37 to 20 win over the Colts. Across the pond over in London, the British Tennessee Titans fans wanted to see if their King Henry could beat Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. But for most of this game. It was just the Justin Tucker show. He finished with six field goals on the day that just before the break, Lamar can make defenses dizzy with his dazzling agility, finding Zay Flowers in for the touchdown. The Ravens take all of their flowers home with them as they get the 24 to 16 win. We stayed <clears throat> uh, locked in during the layoff. The fact that we had to play up until the last day of the season to get in. I think that's even more important, you know, um, than the layoff. Well, being rusty for Dusty Baker isn't even a thought as the Houston Astros take on the Texas Rangers in game one of the American League Championship Series tonight. The defending world champs will begin their seventh straight ALCS while the Rangers play their first championship series since 2011. First pitch is at 715 p.m. We're going to have all the updates for you tonight on instant replay. Guys, it's going to be fun. It game will one. Be. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for keeping your shoes on, Nick. Oh, yeah, I pleasure. was just going to say after seeing Larry's Fred Flintstone feet, <laughs> we now need to bring back silly socks Sunday. They co he covered them with the sand right. in his defense. We'll be right back. <laughs> Not quite as breezy tomorrow, but wind still sustained out of the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chilly mornings, beautiful afternoons, plenty of sunshine, and then we warm things up as we head into the later portions of this week and next weekend. Just a 10% chance for a very stray shower on Thursday. Other than that, we're pretty quiet, guys.
Tim's in one of his moods, so I'm not letting him say bye. You're done for right now. That's all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back on the night beat where we'll let Tim say work.